People who have strokes often need physical rehabilitation to try to regain function. And here is where science and music collide. As musicians with London's Royal Philharmonic Orchestra travel the world, they also play and perform music with stroke patients. It's part of a therapeutic program the Philharmonic created, and it's called Strokestra. In a hotel lobby, there are first time hellos and hello again hugs, leaving an outside world where things aren't so easy, where steps are hard fought, where most are still fighting. Let's go. And just like that, these dozen Emory Brain Health stroke patients with their husbands and wives and doctors and therapists join musicians from London's world-renowned Royal Philharmonic Orchestra. Yes, that orchestra, to create a brand new strokestra. Conductor, Dr. Tim Steiner. I'm actually a doctor of music, which means I can fix music. <laughs> but I can't, I can't fix you back. The Royal Philharmonic helped create this stroke rehab program two years ago, a program where whimsy and wonder rule, where self-conscious jitters quickly evaporate. Patients direct Fraser, the bassoon player, The cacophony of competing sounds eventually gives way to something cohesive. I was scared to death. Sam Macon is grateful to have Patty, his wife of 50 years, with him today. She put out what I was going to wear, and it's not all the time, but you just look really the, nice, too. Thank you so much. Doctors didn't know if Alvin Dunlop would survive. Now he's keeping the beat. I saw him today. The look on his face. I hadn't seen that in a long time. There's something on music that gives joy. It elevates people's, not only mood, but their social interaction. Harvard's Dr. Ron Hirschberg and Emory Brain House Dr. David Burke have spent their careers helping people heal their brains. Today, they are members of the Strokestra. People connect with music even in the darkest, deepest moments. Music can, can connect with them. Neuroplasticity is really the brain's ability to change by experience-driven input. And so rhythm and music really are universal. There's a part of the primitive brain in all of us that has some understanding of music. Research into music has shown that it helps the brain recover from injury. It has been used to help stroke patients walk faster and recover their speech. There are rhythm centers in the brain in the motor cortex, also in the cerebellum in the back of the brain, and deep in the brain in the basal ganglia. And so there is, you know, the cortex on the outside of the brain, and then the inner part is the subcortex. But there are motor pathways that can be stimulated by different areas of enrichment. And rhythm can sort of, in a sense, trick the basal ganglia, can, can step in with a cue that is lost from the stroke. That's what people are trying to harness. Physical therapist Dr. Sarah Blanton works with these patients. And at this rehearsal, she saw one of them do something surprising. Ralph McCluggage hadn't played the trombone for years before his stroke, and certainly not since his stroke. And his wife convinced him to bring it that day, and he played it with his weaker hand for the first time in years. That was just absolutely thrilling to me. I was just so excited. <laughs> And then there is Debbie Botner, who had to be convinced to come. My dad said I couldn't carry a tune across the street. And they said, you're going to be playing with the Royal Philharmonic. I said, no. <laughs> I said, I don't think so. The big performance is tomorrow. Nerves are beginning. Well, I'll probably shake, but I've got a tambourine. That's good. <laughs> One, two, three. Before a crowd of global rehabilitation experts, the Strokestra jam session begins. Truth is on display, 
reminding us some things are lost, unable to be recovered. An even greater truth, there is much that can be rediscovered. A sense of community, of pride, of joy. We gain stuff from each other. We are strong for each other. I would do this again.